Yo, keep it sky here. What's going on? And welcome back to the channel, and welcome to part two of Mini DSP. I guess we can call it. We are going through and learning how to use the Mini DSP and utilize it in our system. So the first video we did was just talking about the Mini DSP, getting it plugged up to our laptop, updating everything we needed to update, getting it prepared to be used. Today we're going to talk about how to set up our system because there's some things we have to change, turn off, make sure we get some settings correct before we go in and calibrate it so that we get the best results possible. So today I'm going to talk to you about turning off your room correction, what you should set your subs to before you plug this up, all those different things to get prepared to make some corrections. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get into our receiver or preprocessor settings and get things ready to go. And I have an Anthem AVM70, it's my preprocessor, so this will be a little bit different for you, but you guys will have the same settings inside your Anthem AVM receivers or your Yamahas, your Marantz, your Denons, you'll all have the same settings. So you wanna go into your receiver and look for these settings and turn things on or off. I actually have the ability to control my entire system with my phone because Anthem has an app. So you wanna find these settings in your respective gear. All right, guys, so the first thing we want to do is go into our receiver and change a few settings. And what we want to do first is go to your respective systems crossover settings where you can change the crossover for your speakers. You want to go into there. Now, Anthem has an app for me, so I can control my entire Anthem system with this app here. So I'll pop it up on screen for you guys so you can see where my settings are. But in your Marantz, Denon, Yamaha, Pioneer, you guys have the same settings. So go to where they are and do these same changes. The first thing you want to do is go to where your crossover is at. Mine is in setup menu, down to speakers, and then I can click on my profile here. And you want to find where you can change your crossovers. We want to change our front crossover to as high as we can go. So I'm going to go to the front crossover. I have it on 50 right now. We're going to change that to as high as it can go, which is 200 hertz. The reason why we want to change this to 200 hertz or as high as you can change it is because we're going to be calibrating our subs. We don't want any sub bass coming from the tower speakers or from your main speaker. So you want to turn those speakers to 200 hertz so that when you're calibrating everything, it's only coming from the subwoofer. So you can change your front crossover to 200 hertz. The next thing that you want to change is make sure you're not on LFE plus main. If you're using a Marantz or Denon product, you're going to see LFE plus main. I think even Yamaha says it too. Or in my case, Anthem, it's called super sub fronts. What this means is that your main speakers are also going to play the, some of the same sub frequencies that your subwoofers are playing. You want to turn that off as well. So turn off super sub fronts, LFE plus main, whatever you have it called, make sure it's set to just LFE, meaning only the subs are going to play low frequency effects. So mine's turned off by default. I don't use it by default, but make sure yours is off as well. Now the next setting we need to change is in the levels menu. Go to the menu where you can change your speaker levels. You'll see zero dB, plus one dB, minus whatever. You have speaker levels that you can change the volume of each individual speaker. Find that menu in your receiver. Mine's here on my phone, you guys can see it here. You want to change um, your subwoofers to zero. I'm gonna go to setup menu. I think it's under, I think it's under speakers, Kef R. If I scroll down, I think it is, there we go. So my speaker levels are here. My subs are set to negative 2.5 and negative one dB because that's what calibration did, but we're actually gonna change that to be zero dB, zero being even, no positive or no negative adjustment. We're gonna make that zero on both my subwoofers there. And we want that to be set at zero so that when we're doing calibration, the mini DSP has its most accurate reading, the microphone can detect it, all that good stuff. So make sure your subwoofer is set to zero for every subwoofer that you have. Now I can't change this setting in my phone, but I can with my remote or on my laptop, but you wanna turn off your calibration. So if you're running Marantz, if you're using Odyssey, turn off Odyssey. If you're using YPOW from Yamaha, turn off YPOW. You wanna deactivate your personal calibration tool that your system has built in. Completely turn it off. For me, mine's Anthem Arc, so I can go in and, and, and pretty much disconnect that from my system, meaning there is no calibration being used. You wanna turn that off before you get started. And then go back to crossover and set your subwoofer crossover to 120 hertz. I know you set your front speakers to 200, set your subwoofers to 120 hertz. So that's what we're gonna be correcting from 
however low your sub can get, 20 hertz, 15 hertz, whatever, up to 120 hertz is what we're going to be correcting. So we want to set our crossovers to 120 hertz because that's where most of the information lies between zero and 120 hertz. So make sure you change your crossover on your subs to 120 and turn off your room correction processing. All right, the last thing we need to do in our receiver or preprocessor, this is the last setting that you need to make before we move on to the subwoofer. You need to change your sound settings to stereo, to channel stereo. Right now, you most likely have it on like Dolby Atmos or Dolby Surround or something like that. You wanna go to your sound parameters and cycle through until you reach the um, stereo, two channel stereo, not all channel stereo, but two channel stereo. I'll show you on my phone. If I click on the Dolby Surround at the top right corner, this gives me my audio mode so I can select what I want to. I want to go down and select two channel stereo. Now you see in my settings, I don't have it here, but I can go into my computer and I can select two channel stereo or I can just turn off all of my speakers. If I go to settings, setup menu, if I go to speakers, and then KEF R, I can go through and turn off my center, my surround, and my um, Atmos speakers. Now, only thing that's hooked up is my sub and my front speakers. That's the only two that will be making any sound. So make sure you change it to all, to, to change your speakers to two channel stereo, cross over your subs at 120 hertz, cross over your two front speakers at 200 hertz or higher, Make sure that you turn off your room correction and then you're pretty much set up to start using the DSP. Go ahead and grab your laptop or your PC, plug in your DSP, and now we're ready to get ready to make some changes. All right, we are now done with changing settings in your preprocessor for the most part or your receiver. Now we wanna make sure our subs themselves are set correctly. On your sub, if you're using an active subwoofer, meaning it has an, a plate amp on the back, you're gonna to wanna to change some settings too. So if you went into your receiver and changed your crossover on your subwoofer to 120, you need to make sure that on the back of your subwoofer, you've also had it set to LFE or its highest setting. So on the back of your plate amp, there is a crossover dial. Turn that all the way up to 120 hertz, LFE, whatever it is that you have on there. Make sure it's pretty high um, because you want all the frequencies to come through so that we can correct as many changes as we can. So go to the back of your sub, find your plate amp, find the crossover dial, and turn it up pretty much as high as it can go. Most subs also go to about 200 hertz, 180 hertz, maybe 160. Turn it all the way up. You may see LFE, turn it all the way up to LFE. Just make sure that it's as high as possible. Me personally, I have a phase option. If I go to settings here, setup menu, um, speakers, KEF R. If I go down to my subwoofer section, I have the ability to change my phase frequency. And that's what it means as well. My crossover and I can change my phase as well. You wanna change your phase to normal. You may have a phase switch. It may say zero or 180 degrees, change it to zero on all of your subs, and then we'll work on getting that correct later. Um, if you have more than one sub, it's probably best to play with this. I have some phase videos already on my channel about how to pick the right phase, so definitely take a look at that. But change all your polarities to normal or zero. Not zero on 180, keep it on zero, let your um, calibration do the figuring out. So change your crossover on your sub to 120 or higher. All right, so now we have our sub set up and we have our receiver slash preprocessor set up. The settings are good. If you've made these changes now, then you are ready to get into Room EQ Wizard and your mini DSP 2x4 HD. So go ahead and have that plugged up now if you don't already, because what we need to do next is level match or game match our subs. And Real briefly, I'll tell you what the what that means and what the differences are between the two. So me personally, I've taught you guys on previous videos how to level match your speakers. You take a microphone, which you can use Room EQ Wizard and Mini DSP to do this, or if you have a dedicated microphone, actually let me walk off camera and I'm gonna grab my microphone for you guys. This is my microphone here that, let me turn the light on so you guys can see. This has the ability to read the decibels in the room. So I can put it in my listening position and play a pink noise that comes out of your sub and you want to level match them. Meaning you want to get this to read about 75 dBs on all your subs. So if you go into the mini DSP and play a test tone, or if you go to room EQ wizard and play a test tone, it'll 
uh, give a pink noise in the system through your subs, you want to turn up the volume or turn down the volume until you see each sub reach 75 dB in your listening position. That is level matching, meaning all of your subs are reading 75 dB in your listening position. Not all subs playing 75 dB, but when it reaches where you sit, it reads 75 dB. So you can level match it, making sure that all your subs have the same volume where you sit. Now, a lot of people rather game match, meaning that all of your subs are playing the same uh, decibel level, even if it's not the same at your seat. So for example, I have a sub in the front of the room and I have a sub right here next to me in the back of the room. And you wanna take your microphone and put the microphone maybe one meter away from the sub and you wanna turn it up or down until it reaches 75 dB and then go to the back sub here, put it about a meter away and measure it try to get 75 dB again. Now, when you sit here, they both won't be 75 dB, but they are both playing 75 dB. And some people like to game match better because no sub is working harder than the other. You may like this better. The benefit of game matching instead of level matching is that when you're sitting here, um, not only are all subs playing the same you know, volume level, so no sub is working harder than the other, assuming both subs are the same, you also have a better chance of calibrating them um, and getting them to work in tangent with each, with each other because they are playing the same volume, the same frequencies at the same pace, at the same rate, right? So no sub is giving more or less power than the other. So you may like that better to calibrate with or you may wanna make sure that they're both playing 75 dB in your spot one may be working harder than the other. So make that choice for yourself, but nonetheless, make sure your subs read 75 dB, whether you game match or you level match. All right, so we have set up our preprocessor or receiver. We have our sub settings correct on the physical subs themselves. We now wanna go ahead, if we haven't already, plug in our DSP to our laptop or PC. Mine is plugged up. You also wanna make sure you have an HDMI cord going from your laptop or PC to your receiver or preprocessor because that's how we're going to get the test tones and sweeps to come through our system is via HDMI. So make sure you have an HDMI plugged up to your laptop PC going to one of the HDMI inputs of your receiver and then of course change, turn to that input. So here on the screen, I'll full screen it for you guys. This is the mini DSP 204 HD's interface. It has changed over the years, so it may not look the same as what you are may used to be seeing or maybe this is the first time you've had it. So we've already walked through getting the software downloaded, installed, getting drivers set up, everything in the first video. So if you haven't watched that, you'll need to do this first before you do this part because we've done that already. So now my device, my laptop knows that my mid DHP is here. So this is the software in which we're gonna to use to do a lot of different things with calibration. So you not only want to have this ready, but if we close it out, we also wanna have room EQ wizard ready as well, because this is what's gonna show us those graphs, show us what's going on, and uh, what changes we may need to be making. Now, you do need a microphone if you have not purchased one already. A lot of people get the U-Mic 1 that they pair with the Mini DHP. I, I, I actually have my own Anthem AVM70 plugged up to this. The Anthem comes with a mic with its own uh, software. So I actually have that microphone plugged up to this device right now. So you wanna download Room EQ Wizard, REW as well. Make sure you install everything because this is what's gonna give you the sound. This is what's gonna do the sweeps, show you the grasp, assume you the graph and, and all that good stuff. So let's go back to the Mini DHP. We do need to set up a few things on here. Um, actually, let's go to Room EQ Wizard first, because we want to do a couple things. The first thing you do when you pop into this software, you're going to have it say you need to run calibration so it gets uh, acclimated to your system, your microphone, everything. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Preferences at the top left corner here, and you're on the sound card file here, the first tab. You want to make sure your driver is set to Java. If you don't have it to Java, you probably won't have any audio output. It may frustrate you. So have it to Java. Your output device is the receiver or processor you're using. It recognized my uh, AVM70 here because that's what I'm plugged up to via the HDMI. So select your receiver or preprocessor there. And the input device is your microphone. What microphone are you using? It detected that I had an ARC microphone. So that's what I'm using as well. 
Um, and then once you have all that set up here, you want to make sure you go to the calibration sound card. Calibrate sound card down towards the middle of the screen. You're gonna wanna press that uh, because it's gonna play some uh, 100 or 1000 kilohertz tone. It'll do a sweep for the sub. It wanna make sure that you're at the right DB reading. You wanna make sure that your volume levels are set before you do all this. So go ahead and hit the calibrate sound card button and then you can name that file and save it accordingly. Um, and then now you're ready to finally move on. I've done that part already, um, so I'll skip past this. Now, let's go back to the DSP because there were some things you need to change as well. So you have four outputs, one in or two inputs, one output. So you can and you can do that accordingly. Make sure that, let me go back to, this, these are different presets here that you can choose, but let's just focus on the first preset. Right here at the top corner, you have output one, two, three, and four. Um, if they're not green, then they're not active. So you can click on these and turn these outputs off. So depending on how many subwoofers you're using decides how many you need. So output one is on and output two is on because I have two subwoofers. If you have three, then you want output three. You can even turn in, turn off these inputs or change these inputs, all that good stuff. Now I'm not gonna go through what PEQ and crossover and all this stuff means just yet. We're gonna wait for the next video to do that, but you just wanna get everything set up. And uh, last thing for sure is to go over to input source and make sure you select analog. If you don't select analog, you will not get any audio. Um, so make sure you have it set to analog so that when you do run your calibration, your frequency sweeps, all that stuff, you actually hear something. Otherwise, you won't. So at the top middle of Room EQ Wizard, you have an SPL meter. Now you don't wanna use this SPL meter to measure your volume level. You wanna use your own microphone. So it's really nice to have one. So you want to calibrate your system. I'm gonna turn this on. Hopefully it's not too loud here. Not too loud. You guys probably can't hear that. But my subwoofer is generating a tone. And the goal is to reach 75 dB. We discussed this in the previous clip. You need to have your microphone and get all your subs to read 75 dB. Now you don't wanna go off of this here. You don't wanna go off of the SPL meter on Room EQ Wizard. You wanna go off of the one on your microphone. So it is important to have a microphone, hit calibrate. Once you're done, you can save this file. Once you've done all the setting up in your DSP, you've done all the setting up in your Room EQ Wizard, you have realized that now your sound is coming through, it's all set to the volume level that's necessary. Now you can click on, I'll do it again so you guys can see it. You wanna go to the top left corner of Roo and click measure. You're gonna bring this screen up here where you can do different sweeps, change the length of it, but the goal is to now calibrate your system. You press the start button, it sends a sweep through your subs, and you are able to start Start calibrate. I'm just going to go ahead and click on start. I had the volume down pretty low because I don't want it to be heard in the video or in the apartment, but it just did a sweep for my subwoofer for me now. I'm going to hit okay. The volume level is too low. That's why it's saying this. Let me, but this is what we're going to have. Once you do a sweep, you're going to start seeing some graphs, and this is where you start making your changes. But like I said, we're going to save this for a later video. Now we're getting into the actual calibration system. So if you haven't watched the first video of setting it up, make sure you do that first. Once you've gone to that video, come back to this one and get your DSP and your receiver subwoofers set up. And then the next talk video, about, we'll talk actually about actually making some changes and reading graphs, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for part three when we do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we will see you on and see you again in the next one. K-Pace guy out. Peace.